Please remain standing for the reading of today's scripture lesson from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 6 through 10, found on page 28 of the New Testament in the Pew Bible. Now, listen to the word of God. This is the anointing at Bethany. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, Bob wanted to read scripture this morning uh, for a very special reason, because it is his wife's birthday. And I can't think of a nicer birthday gift for a wife. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, our scripture this morning was read so beautifully um, from the NRSV version of the Bible. And it says, uh, Jesus says, why are you troubling this woman? She has done a good service for me. Um, I looked at the word good service, and I thought, wonder what that is in the Greek. And so I looked it up in the Greek, and um, I found a translation that I like better, that I think is uh, more in keeping with what the original intent of this phrase was. And um, so, so the one we read this morning is from the NRSV, but I like the translation in the NIV and the ESV better, um, and I think it's just a little more accurate. And in those translations, Jesus says... Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. Beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. I just love that phrase. I think it's so beautiful. You know what a beautiful thing is? It is those things that happen to us um, unexpected when we need them most. You know, you're having a terrible day, you're not sure if you can go on, you're feeling miserable, nobody remembers you, and then all of a sudden your phone rings, and it's somebody from 10 years ago that you haven't talked to in 10 years, a friend, who just called you at the perfect moment. That's a beautiful thing. You know, when you're feeling all alone, nobody knows that you're having a blue day, and you go to the mailbox, and there's a card in there, and it's like a nothing card, it's like a I'm just thinking of you card. It's when you're feeling sorry for yourself because you're spending your birthday alone and somebody remembers that it's your birthday. It's when your loved one is sick and they don't even call and ask you if you'd like dinner. It just shows up on your porch. These are beautiful things. And I don't know how beautiful things work exactly, but beautiful things, I believe, are the moments that carry us through the most difficult times in our lives. They're little, they're like nothing, but they catch our attention and they remind us that we're not alone. Somehow they show us that God is with us. Beautiful things, they matter and they carry us through the darkest and deepest times of our lives. At least that's what happened to me in my life. Is I, when I think of the times in my life when I was the most dark, um, the most despairing. When I think of those times, I remember these beautiful things that happened to me. That's what I remember when I look back. On the Sunday that my mother died, I was at church. I was sitting in the front, and it was the closing hymn, and the custodian came and got me and said, you have a phone call. And I thought, who would be calling me during church? 
So I went to the back and some the nursery worker was there and she had brought my two boys and they were standing there and so I knew that something had happened that I didn't know about and I got on the phone and Janelle, who is now my adopted daughter, was there and she said "Granny and grand, that Granny died while we were at church. Now my mother had been sick for a long time but you could have, a Mack truck could have run her over and I would not have been any more surprised. And then everybody started saying, should we take the boys? Do you want us to take the boys for the afternoon? And I said, no, do not take the boys. They're my, they're my rock. They're my strength. I want them with me. They'll go with me. And I had to drive 45 minutes to my mom's house. And um, so I got to my car. I put my kids in the car. I turned on the car. And the minute I pulled out of the parking space, I knew I'd made a mistake because they started fighting. Like, fighting. They were pinching each other. Julian was flinging his leg over his brother. He was doing that thing where he was like inching his arm over. And then Britton was saying, don't get in my space. Get out of my space. And then Britton bit him. And then we were just this big battle. And for 45 minutes, they fought and I screamed at them. And I thought, I'm going to have to pull over this car and I'm going to kill them. I cannot handle this. I was losing it. And I'm driving and I'm trying to get to my mom's house as fast as I could. And when I got to my mom's house, I got to the driveway. My dad was standing in the driveway waiting for me on one side of the car. And on the other side of the car was my friend Lynn. And she opened up the back door of my car and she unbuckled my boys and she said, get out, we're going to McDonald's and my boys wanna play with you this afternoon and I've got a bunch of M&Ms at my house, you wanna go? And they went with Lynn. And it was a beautiful thing. And I have never forgotten it. But the crazy thing is that when I told Lynn how much it meant to me, she didn't know what I was talking about. She was like, I did nothing. It was nothing. But to me, because I needed her so badly and I just needed somebody to take my kids away from me, it was everything I needed. And it got me through the most difficult moments of my life. When my dad died, um, I was at the, at the visitation, and I think it was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday night, and it was his visitation, again, just, you know, heartbreaking, and I'm standing there, and I'm greeting people, I'm greeting people, and I saw my senior pastor, and um, he came up, and he bent over, and he was going to say something, and I thought he was going to say, you know, how are you, are you doing okay, something like that, and instead he said, are you still able to preach this Sunday? It was my Sunday to preach, and I thought, uh, and I didn't know what to say, so I just said, yeah, I'll be there. So I think that was like on a Wednesday, and then we buried him on a Thursday, and then I think I preached on that Sunday. I don't know what I preached on on that Sunday, and I feel sorry for the people that had to listen to that sermon. I can only imagine how I went on or what I said. I don't even remember what my text was or anything, but um, I went to church. I preached, and it was um, hymn month at that church. And so what they did at that church was they we would shorten the first half of the service, and then at the end, everybody would just raise their hand and shout out numbers of a hymn, and we would sing like three or four hymns together, and it was fun, and people loved it. And so I got through the Sunday. I don't remember it. It was blurry. Um, but then at the very end, I was getting ready to do the benediction, and Dr. Frazier stood up, and he said, Leanne, before you give the benediction, I, I, I just, what was your dad's favorite hymn? And I said, it was Lord of the Dance. And he said, can, can we sing that before we leave? I want to sing your dad's favorite hymn. It was a beautiful thing. And I never forgot it. When I was writing the sermon, I thought, I wonder if I can find Dr. Frazier on Facebook or something. I wonder if he even remembers doing that. Because I've never forgotten it. It's those beautiful things that get us through the most difficult moments of our lives. It's not the big things. It's the little things, the beautiful things. Because when the journey is long and the journey is hard, we need those beautiful things. And they pop up just when we need them. I have one more story for you. When I went to Colorado, 
Um, I was living in Lima, Ohio, and I um, got a call, and they said, it was from Leonard Sweet, and he said, there's this church open in Colorado. It's a nice church. It'd be a good place for you to heal and get away and raise boys. You ought to go out there and interview. Well, I had no intention of taking a job in Colorado, but I thought, hmm, I'll go to Colorado. I'll get a free trip to Colorado. So I went for the interview, not expecting to like it. And when I got there, I thought, whoa, wait a minute. This is beautiful. These skies are blue. I could heal here. This is a place where little boys should grow up climbing mountains and playing in streams. And so I thought, mm, maybe I should take this seriously. So I set up a second interview. So uh, they brought me back to Colorado a second time, and it was the most grueling um, process I've ever been through. On the Sunday in the morning, I had to do the children's time in front of the whole congregation, and then they were invited to give feedback with a group of children I'd never seen before. And then that afternoon, the children's council all met in a theater, and they were in theater seats, and I was on a stage with about 30 kids I'd never met before, and they said, do a lesson, and we're going to grade you on the lesson. And I thought, whoa, this is, this is hard. That was stressful. Went home the next day, went to dinner with, I think, staff parish that night. The next day then, they had me scheduled for an interview every hour from 8 in the morning till 5 o'clock with every member of the staff. They each got an hour to talk to me. And it was grueling. So about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I mean, by now I was just overwhelmed. I was second-guessing if this is what I should do. And I couldn't figure out if I really wanted to move that far away from Janelle, who was a student at UK at the time. And I thought, I, I just, I got really confused. And I, I, it was just overwhelming. And I was just going to pull out of the whole process. I thought, this is too much. These people are too intense. And, um, and then at 2 o'clock, the pastoral care minister came in for his appointment. And he had a bowl of peanuts and a Coke. And he gave me a can of Coke, and he set the peanuts down in front of me, and he went over and he flipped off the light. And he said, I, I don't need to ask you any questions. I'm going to give you an hour to yourself. I already like you. And I sat there in the dark, and I prayed. And I decided in that hour that I would move to Colorado. And so I healed and I brought up my boys climbing mountains and playing in streams just where little boys should grow up. And it was probably the best decision I'd ever made in my life, and all because somebody did a beautiful thing for me. Now, I know he wouldn't have thought a thing about that. He probably did nice things like that all the time. But when the journey's long, when the journey's hard, beautiful things matter. And I have never forgotten that. In our scripture lesson for today, um, the woman does a beautiful thing for Jesus. His journey has been long, and it has been hard. He's in Bethany right before he enters Jerusalem in the context of this scripture. You know, he knew that when he entered Jerusalem, everybody knew that when you enter Jerusalem riding on a donkey, proclaiming to be a Messiah, that your life is short-lived. He knew exactly what he was doing. I can only imagine the pressure that he was under. First of all, he was exhausted from three years of ministry. His own colleagues and friends had turned on him and were questioning him at every turn. He was exhausted. He had to be afraid the burden that he must have been carrying when he entered the home of his friends in Bethany for one night before he made the most difficult journey of his life it must have been daunting. And that woman does a beautiful thing. She gets some costly perfume. She opens it and she anoints his head with it. She massages it into his forehead and into his temples. She gives him a beautiful thing. Of course, the disciples get mad, and they tell her it's ridiculous. But Jesus stops them. And he says the same thing I've been saying to you all morning. No, she's done for me a beautiful thing. And beautiful things matter. And in fact, what this woman has done to me today, they will remember forever. And here we are, 2,000 years later, 
remembering that beautiful thing that she did for Jesus on the most difficult night of his life. You know, the part of the story that, that breaks my heart the most, though, is the disciples. I just hate when they have to get judgy. I just hate when she's done this beautiful thing and then they have to speak up and tell her how, you know, the money could have been spent better and she wasted her perfume and what difference does it make? And they shamed her. They made her feel terrible. And that isn't the part that breaks my heart the most. The part that breaks my heart the most is that I know how she felt. We all do. You know, she wanted to do more than just anoint his head with oil. You know, she, she wanted to make it better. She wanted to take his pain away. She wanted to scream through the streets of Jerusalem and protect him and say, listen to him. He is about love and justice. He is not your enemy. He is your friend. He is our God. She wanted to stop him from going into Jerusalem. And she didn't have control over that. So she did what she could do. A beautiful thing. She did her best. I don't need to tell you that we have been on a journey. It's been long and it's been hard. And I don't know about you, but this second wave of this new variant and the fact that I found out that my vaccine, which I thought was my ticket to freedom, might not be as effective as they told me it was. And as I watch schools go back in and children be quarantined in and out. And when I listen to parents and just their desperation of not knowing what to do, everybody trying to make decisions. When I listen to you talk about, I don't know now if I should go to my mother's 90th birthday because I don't know. This second wave has personally for me been almost harder than the first one. It's been a long journey. We're tired. We're worn out. And then you add on top of that everything that we're going through and that you're going through. You've got loved ones who are grieving. You've got loved ones who are sick. You've got your own health things that you're going through. You're worried about your friends. You're worried about the mental health of people. And then you add on there all the violence that we're seeing in Afghanistan. And then you add the fires. And then you add the floods. This is a long journey. And it's a hard journey. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel super overwhelmed. I don't know where to start to make it better for anybody. And that's why I think this story is so important for us today. Because it shows us where to start when the journey is hard. We start by doing one beautiful thing for somebody who needs a beautiful thing. And as soon as we do it, I guarantee that we're going to hear the disciples. It might be the voice in our own head that sounds like the disciples saying to us, well, that makes no difference. You just did one little thing. I mean, that's not even a drop in the bucket for everything that needs to be done. And then I want you to turn to Jesus and hear his words. Because he will say to you the same thing he said to the disciples and to that woman. You've done a beautiful thing, and beautiful things matter, and they will never be forgotten. So we carry on. We do one beautiful thing, then we do another beautiful thing, and then we do another beautiful thing. And we'll get through this. That woman did her beautiful thing 2,000 years ago, and here we are still talking about it. I can't help but wonder when we get through COVID and we're 20 years down the road, 50 years down the road, 100 years down the road, will people look back and see what we did? And what will they remember? Will they remember that we tore each other up with bickering and fighting? Or will they remember all of the beautiful things that we are capable of doing? The journey is long. The journey is hard. 
We are the body of Christ. We are the hands and the feet and the heart of that woman who anointed him 2,000 years ago. May we love him by doing beautiful things for each other. The choice is ours. May we choose to do beautiful things. Amen.